Hello, this is Richard Jacobs. I'm the executive director of the Finding Genius Foundation, a, a nonprofit of 501c3. I'm also the host of the Finding Genius podcast. This year, in approximately October, I will have reached 3,000 interviews with researchers and clinicians and all kinds of people in the uh, in the biomedical and health world. Um, I'm working on a project which you likely know about because you're on this list uh, called the Anxiety and Depression Codex. And I'm going to be sharing with you what I'm learning as I go through the journey, this uh, approximately 18-month journey, to create a resource for people that have anxiety and depression or for people that know people that have anxiety and depression. And the bottom line of the resource, and I'm going to repeat this a lot, but I think this is the central idea, is that if you have these problems or know someone that does, uh, that person will affect everyone around them, kind of like a, uh, they will affect everyone around them, maybe like a planet. Their, their anxiety and depression is a gravity that pulls on everyone they come into contact with, whether it's at the store, a family member, a coworker, fellow churchgoer, etc. And if it's a negative energy, if it's a depressed or angry or an anxious energy, again, that gravity will pull down everyone near them. I'm not saying this to make people feel bad. I'm saying this because this is the truth, unfortunately. And conversely, if you're in a good mood, you have the reverse gravity. And if you're happy and you're positive, that also affects every single person you come into contact with and helps them and makes them feel better. So if I can help hundreds of thousands or millions of people around the world that are suffering, not only improve their own symptoms and their own lives, that will also spread to people that they know. Let's say the average person knows, uh, you know, 150 people, which is what's called the Dunbar number, seems to be a... a you know, a, a number that's scientifically based that people know at least somewhat. Well, if I help a million people, that's 150 million people affected if there's no overlap, which is a lot of people. So that's really the, the big goal of the Anxiety and Depression Codex. Let me give you one more way to think about it that I've also mentioned before. But if you go to a practitioner, you know, whatever they do, cognitive behavioral therapy, or if they prescribe SSRIs or whatever it may be, they're likely to give you maybe one thing to do to help your anxiety or depression. They're likely to know probably about 1% of all the possible treatments out there. My goal with this project is to gather 21% of all the possible treatments out there because that would be just you know, 20 times better than what's out there from any one practitioner. I think it would be a home run on top of a home run. Now, a long preamble here, I want to get to you another topic today that I've recently learned. So I've been doing interviews now with a lot of healthcare practitioners uh, to learn, you know, researchers, clinicians, etc. The more I talk to people, the more I learn about anxiety and depression. I've got to become a big time expert in it really to run this project and make it work. And I'm doing it, you know, through interviews. My goal is to interview at least probably a hundred different people, uh, researchers, clinicians, etc. And then an additional hundred people that have these problems, anxiety, depression, and related disorders. If you're listening and if you'd like me to interview you and hear your story, I'd love to do that. It can be anonymous if you want. I can call you Mr. or Miss X. You know, we don't have to give you a name. If you want to give you a name, great. But uh, for the podcast, we're definitely looking for people that uh, either have direct experience with someone that has anxiety and depression or are they themselves. So here's what I've learned. So far, at least, I see three levels of anxiety and depression. Level one is acute you're told you have cancer, your husband or wife wants a divorce, you lose your job, something happens, some, something really bad happens, it's acute, it's right there in your face. And of course, a lot of people would feel anxious and depressed about bad events in their life. That's not what this project is for, unfortunately. Not that it's not valid, but for those people, <clears throat> what caused their distress is much more obvious. And the methods to fix fix that distress, they may come out of this project. They may be helpful things, but I can't help everybody. I have to focus. Now there's the second group, the chronic people. These are people that have had anxiety or depression. They may have been diagnosed or may not, but they've had it for months or years or decades, God forbid. But some people, that's what happens to them. That's, that's chronic. That's not acute. There doesn't seem to be any, perhaps on the surface, reason that they are that way. It could be, you know, maybe a hormone imbalance. I mean, it could be many things. That's what this is what the whole project's goal is to figure out. Is it their diet? Do they need cognitive behavioral therapy? Is it their microbiome? Are brain scans showing something? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've, we've gathered so far 
21 or 22 different possible treatments, and we're going to begin the research in them shortly. But again, this is for people that have chronic problems over a long period of time. I learned recently through an interview there's a third level. These are the people, unfortunately, that are seriously mentally ill, schizophrenia, um, manic depressive, bipolar disorder, a psychosis, etc. This project, I think, will definitely have a big impact on these people. I think the treatments that we uncover and find um, may be a huge resource to these people, but they are not the avatar. They're not the main focus of the project. Why? Because I don't think a project of this nature is going to get us all the way there. And people in that state, but I think more likely caretakers or family members, etc., would need the resource. Again, nothing wrong with that, but I don't think it's a fit for this project. I'm focusing on the chronic kind of long haul people. They really need the help where the answer is not obvious. But again, what comes out of this project, I know is going to help the people that are, you know, highly, highly mentally ill. Maybe they're homeless. I mean, who knows? But um, these are the three levels that I've identified. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe there are more uh, major dimensions to anxiety and depression. But this is what I've learned so far. And I hope this is interesting and helpful to you. So this middle level, the chronic level is what we're focusing on. And now comes the uh, the end part. Um I've been funding this. I'm going to continue funding it, but I can't do it alone. I need your help. I've estimated budget-wise it's going to be about $500,000 to do this project, to create the codex, the resource for people that are suffering or know people that are suffering. So I need your help. I need your donations. I'm just being honest. Um, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, 10,000 bucks, whatever you can do. doesn't matter how little. Obviously, the bigger, the better. That's wonderful. But if you go to findinggeniusfoundation.org, uh, there's donation buttons there all over the place. You can donate. If you'd like to read our summary of the project, it's called the Anxiety and Depression Codex. That can be downloaded on the FindingGeniusFoundation.org website, or uh, it may likely be attached to this email uh, in, in addition to this podcast. So thank you for listening. And again, I'm going to uh, keep telling you the things I'm learning, and I welcome your feedback and comments the entire way because I can't do this alone. I have a wonderful super smart board of directors now, about 15 really high caliber individuals that I got through podcasting, form relationships with them, and they're on the board. So they're going to help me. They're going to be my brain trust. Um, I think it's going to be an excellent project, and we're going to make a huge impact. But again, unfortunately, everything does take money, and we need your help. So thank you for listening.